One of the biggest challenges with going off-grid is reliable water. We lived off-grid for five years, and we had to figure out how to get our 100-foot well to give us water without any grid power. So we designed an all-season solution, and it kept us going for years. But now with the tiny home built, we're tied to the grid, purposely. But that actually led to another problem. Our remote location means the power can actually go out quite often, and for weeks at a time. Luckily, I knew this was gonna be the case. So I also made sure to design our tiny home so that it has running water as well as hot water when the grid is down. It's simple, it doesn't require a generator, and it means I never have to worry about water. So I'm gonna walk you through our on-grid, off-grid water system in our tiny home, the simple year-round solution we used when we first moved here, and the smart long-term choices we made along the way that you might benefit from. Let's get into it. We started from scratch on this property. It was all treed, we had to do all the clearing, create access, but we also knew we really needed water. Water is the heart of any home, and we knew that we were gonna invest in a drilled well. That would give us year-round water access. Although it costs a pretty penny, it's absolutely worth it. Now, at the time, we lived fully off-grid, which meant there was no grid access, no power to this property. So how were we going to access the water in our well? Well, luckily for us, even though we had no idea what we were doing and we were just starting our homesteading here, we knew that we should put a submersible well pump that we can use with 120 volt rather than 220. That's because we did have 120 volt power, although limited. In the back of the van is where we had our power. For five years, we lived off of this battery system. It's 500 amp hours, but I won't get into the nitty gritty other than tell you it could supply AC power in 120 volt. That could bring the water to the surface. But there's another problem. We don't want to run that pump all the time. If we ran it all the time, we would easily drain our battery system. Now we did store water in the van to use. So we would run the batteries, we'd fill up our 40 liters of water here, and then we'd have water for a while. And that works okay. But the thing was, we had been living in the van for quite a few years at this point. We needed a bit more creature comforts. And some of you have been following for a while. You know that we built our off-grid washroom. We have everything from a toilet to a sink with hot water, as well as a shower, heating, and lots of room. But to use the well for our off-grid washroom, I had to come up with a solution. The off-grid washroom just had a very simple battery setup in DC, so it couldn't run the 120 volt AC power for the well. So this is what I did. We built a DIY cistern into the ground. There's a thousand liters beneath us right now. We took a thousand liter tote, we dug a hole, placed it into the ground, insulated it on all sides and made sure to give it an access cap here where I can fill up the water. Making that saves so much power. It means I only have to use the inverter in the van for about 20 minutes to pump water from the well to the thousand liter tote in the ground. That thousand liter tote will last over two and a half weeks for showering, washing dishes and whatever else you need to do in the off-grid washer. And it means that water access in there is year round because it's heated. We use a 12 volt pump to pump the water from the cistern into the off-grid washroom. If you wanna see anything more about it, you can check out the full video on the off-grid washroom here. And if you wanna build your own, I have plans, you can check them in the description. That DIY system was one of the best decisions we made for water. But what do we do when we're switching over to our big tiny home? So our tiny home was designed to be different in many ways, but the biggest one was power. That's because we want the modern comforts of appliances. We have a heat pump, we have a dishwasher, stove, obviously running water, more on that in a second. We have lots of lighting, and of course the biggest comfort of all, a dryer and a washer. Because of these changes, I decided to actually put us onto the grid. We did it ourselves and we saved a lot of money that way but we do still have a battery system for the tiny home. More on that in a second. The size of our tiny home meant I had more room to play with. That's why I built this closet for our water and power systems. Our well comes up through the ground here and into our pressure tank. Our pressure tank feeds the house and our water is filtered through this iron filter here because we have a ton of iron in our water. Once it's filtered, it goes to the cold side, but also over here to the hot side. This is our on-demand water heater. It is propane and we love it. The water heater is incredibly important because if you wanna go off the grid and still have water, 
you're most likely going to want to heat your water at some point, and heating water takes a ton of power. In our case, using a propane on-demand water heater, the amount of electricity it uses is almost nothing. It uses only one amp of electricity. In other words, that's nothing at all. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that even though we're on the grid, we go out of power a lot, and that's a problem. The longest amount of time we were out of power was two weeks. That can make it or break it for a lot of people. You can see right now we're on the grid, everything's working, all the lights are on, even the water is working. But what do we do when the power goes out? Well, the secret to keeping the lights on and the water flowing is up here. The utility closet actually extends all the way up to the second floor. And from here, I can access our backup battery system. This system is large enough that it powers our entire tiny home when the grid goes down. We have our Battleborn batteries, which store the electricity, our inverter, which converts the DC power to AC, which powers our home, and it powers everything from outlets to our fridge to lighting, exhaust fans, and of course, our water system. If you wanna see more about the battery system, you can watch this full video. Also, make sure you subscribe. So let's imagine a power outage situation. Right now, we're taking power from the grid and we're powering everything in our home, but then the power goes out. Okay, not everything. Let's imagine the power is fully out. In that case, what I can do is I can flick a switch in the closet over there and it can start pulling power from the battery system upstairs and supplementing everything we need. That means that even off of the grid, we can still get water. Our well pump will still be pumping up to our pressure tank. Our pressure tank will still be flowing and will still be filtering. We will still have hot water because this tiny amount of electricity that the hot water heater needs is no problem for our battery system at all. When we're fully off the grid, which happens often, life doesn't stop. We still wanna be comfortable. That's why we have the battery system and that's why we're still able to get water and hot water into our home. And even though we're on the grid now, we have the freedom of choice of on or off grid. At any time, I can switch everything over to the off grid batteries and be pulling energy from the sun and supplementing power. The reason we don't do this full time is because our power bill in a tiny home is quite low anyways. We spend about $80 per month on energy and $50 of that is just the delivery fee to get the electricity down to our spot on the street. It's really not that bad. If you live in town or in a suburb or even in the city, you're most likely hooked up to city or town water. That means that you don't have to worry about a pump, you don't have to worry about a pressure tank or you don't have to worry about water at all when the power goes out. When the power goes out in your home or your apartment, the town is still feeding water to you because it's pressurized on their end. You don't have to worry about it. But in our case here, or many others like us who have a well, we are responsible for pumping the water up from the ground and getting it into our home, which is why it's so much more difficult. If you don't want to spend the money on a backup battery system, I have some tips for you. First of all, is get a generator. A generator is so useful. Even though we have backup battery systems, I have two generators. They can supplement power, they're amazing. They can do 120 and 220 volt, which means they can do basically any well pump. If you don't have a battery system, if you don't have a generator, and you're looking for some way that you can be prepared for a storm where the power is gonna go out, the best thing I can tell you to do is fill up your tub full of water preemptively before the storm. Because if the power goes out, you still wanna flush the toilet, you still want water for cooking, water for drinking, clean your tub, fill up the well. That way, when you wanna flush, you can take water from the toilet, water from the tub, excuse me, you can put it in the back of the toilet, you can still flush, and then you won't have stuff left behind in there, and you still have drinking water and lots of other things. You guys are super smart. I know you have tons of tips and tons of experience, so make sure you drop them in the comments below and we'll share our experiences and share our tips for ways that we can continue to be comfortable and useful during a power outage. For us, these systems meant peace of mind. When we were fully off the grid, this DIY water system worked great for us. It meant we used a very little amount of electricity and were able to store a ton of water and do it year round. If you want to see more on that, make sure you watch the off-grid washroom video. And now that we're on the grid, 
We never worry about water at all, even if the power goes out. When the power goes out, we just switch over to our backup battery system and we still use water like we did when the grid was on. I'm curious if you guys would do a system like the one we have in the tiny home, or maybe you would do it differently. Make sure you comment below. I do have to say that I am gonna be doing this in every home from now on. It means that we always have power, we always have water, and we're always comfortable and not worried about the what if scenarios. Thank you so much for watching till this point in the video. If you don't mind, drop me a like. It really helps me out and helps get this video out there to people who need to see it. Also, make sure you watch the off-grid washroom video or the battery setup one. There's lots of videos coming out there. I'm always creating content, so make sure you subscribe as well. Until the next one, I'll see you then.